Okay, uh, we are going to get started and we are going to talk about optimization over convex sets. So, so far we were looking at algorithms for optimization over unconstrained sets, basically not unconstrained sets, but over entire Rn. But now we are going to go deeper into problems where there are natural constraints over which, constraint sets over which you are optimizing a objective functional. So we want to solve functions of this type. I want to minimize a function f, uh, rn to r differentiable. And x is a subset of rn, and it's a convex set. Okay, so given that we need to solve problems of this type, what's the first thing we should do? Identify sufficient and necessary conditions for optimality, right? That's the way to certify whether a point is optimal or not. So the necessary condition for optimality is O. Oh, before we go to necessary condition, we need to discuss what is the meaning of a point to be optimal for problems of this type. So it's very similar to very similar to what we had for the unconstrained case. So for global minimum, x star is global minimum if f at x star is less than equal to f of x for all x in capital X. And then local minimum x star is local minimum if and only if there exists epsilon greater than 0 such that f of x star is less than or equal to fx for all x in capital X, norm of x minus x star less than epsilon. Okay, so this is a convex set. Uh, let's say this is my point x star. I'm claiming that it is a local minimum. It means that I can draw a ball of radius epsilon, which is within the set. So this radius is epsilon such that the value of the function within this ball is greater than or equal to the value of function at x star. Okay, now what happens if this point is at the boundary? Let's say here, this is my x star. Then I'm only going to consider this set. Okay, I'm not going to go outside the set. I'm just going to look at the points inside the set. And I want to make sure that the function at x star is has a value which is less than or equal to the function value at any of the points in this particular region. Okay, are the two definitions clear for the convex set case? Okay, 
So we are always looking at points within the set. We don't want to go outside the set, so we have to restrict ourselves to points that are within epsilon distance away, but are part of the set. Why is this thing still working? Okay, uh, well, we'll have a colorful blackboard today. Uh, all right, so necessary condition for optimality. <clears throat> so X star is locally, is, is local minimum implies that gradient of F at X star transpose X minus X star is greater than or equal to zero for all x in capital X. Okay, so in order to see what that necessary condition is saying, let's consider a point X star, and this is my convex set, capital X. Uh, my question is, what are the directions, feasible directions from X star, so that if you take a step in that direction, you actually land up within the set, okay? You don't go outside the set. So what would be the set of all feasible directions be if you're standing at this particular point? Okay, so what are the set of feasible direction? It means that if I take a step in that direction, no matter how long the step is, I should be within the set. Well, not no matter how long, but yeah, it cannot be like infinitely long, but for sufficiently small step size, you should be within the set and not go outside the set. Uh, any thoughts on that? What should the set of feasible directions at X star be? The hint is right there on the board. <coughs> Somebody wants to make an attempt? The gradient in the direction. Not gradient. Gradient can be in any direction. It depends on the function. You have some thoughts? No? Anybody else? All right, so let's pick a point X, an arbitrary point within this set, and let's look at the vector X minus X star, which is this particular vector. So this vector is X minus X star. What happens if you take a step in this particular direction, in x minus x star direction. You would always be within the set, okay? No matter what, how long of a step, as long as the step size is less than or equal to one, you will be within the set itself. You won't go outside the set. Now, if you're completely within the set, let's say this is my x star, then the feasible directions can be anywhere, right? But it still can be written as x minus x star, okay? So pick any point x in the set, x minus x star is a feasible direction from x star. So if you take a step in that direction, you're not going to go out of, out of the set. Why should that be the case? So let's look at it mathematically. So so pictorially, it seems obvious that no matter which point I pick, I can pick a point here. This is a feasible direction. I can pick a point here. This is a feasible direction. I can pick a point here. 
that's a feasible direction. So no matter which point I pick, okay, this entire line segment is going to be within the set. So let's look at it mathematically, what it means. So if I am at x star, or for that matter, any point x in the set, I take a step, si a step of, uh, of magnitude alpha, so let's say alpha is in 0, 1. This is the same as x star 1 minus alpha plus alpha x, which would lie in the set x due to convexity. Okay, that's the definition of convex set because my x is also in the convex set, x star is in the convex set and this is just a convex combination. So that has to lie in the set capital X because by definition, capital X is convex. I'm not able to turn this off. I don't know if uh, any of you know how to do it. If not, we can just work around this colorful board. Okay, so let's, uh, I'll write most of the stuff here, okay? Now, what this necessary condition is saying is no matter which x I pick, if I take a Take the inner product of the gradient of f with the um, with x minus x star, it has to be greater than or equal to zero for all x in capital X. Okay, so no matter which x I pick, I take the inner product with the derivative of the function with the feasible direction that has to be non-negative, and only then, well, not only then, but if x star is a local minimum, then it must satisfy this condition. No, because x star is a local minimum. Okay, so the derivative at x star has to satisfy this condition. Okay, not the derivative at x. So let's see, for this condition, where should the gradient of f be pointing towards for the inner product to be non-negative? So first of all, when is the inner product non-negative? Inner product between two vectors is non-negative, yeah. When, when they make acute angle with each other, right? When the two vectors make less than equal to 90 degrees with each other, then their inner product is supposed to be non-negative. So in this case, let's remove all these feasible directions. I'm claiming that x star is a local minimum. Then my gradient of f has to be pointing inwards. Only then, no matter which feasible direction I take, my inner product with gradient of f at x star is going to be non-negative, okay? So the gradient has to be pointing inwards inside the set. <coughs> Okay, so is this, is this figure clear to everyone? Now I'm going to ask you a trick question. So let's say my x star is here in the middle of the set. In which direction my gradient of f should point to? Let's assume that this is a two-dimensional figure, so there is no third dimension. Where should gradient of f point towards? Under what condition would the gradient of f inner product with all feasible directions be non-negative? Yes, when it's zero, right? So the gradient of function at x star has to be equal to zero, only then, no matter which direction you pick, the function, the inner product is going to be zero, okay? 
well, non-negative, so of course zero is non-negative, so that's why uh, it'll be, uh, the, the, if, if x star is in the interior of the set, then in that case the gradient is going to be zero. If it was a three-dimensional, if it was a two-dimensional convex set in a three-dimensional space, then the gradient of f has to be pointing outwards. Okay? Only then the inner product with all these feasible vectors is going to be equal to zero. Okay, so that wasn't a trick question, by the way. The trick question comes now. What if my x star is here? Where should the gradient of f be pointing towards? So let's say this is my gradient. Uh, gradient of f at x star. Is it making a positive inner product with all the vectors, all the feasible directions? Well, it depends on what the angle is. So let's say if the angle is 30 degrees here, and this is another 40 degrees. Would it be making positive inner product with all feasible directions? Right? Because with all the possible feasible directions, the gradient of f is making an angle of 40 degree to all the way 70 degrees, so at least less than 90 degrees, and therefore it's going to have positive inner, well, non negative inner product with all feasible directions. Okay? So, whereas in this case, the gradient has to be pointing inwards, in fact, it has to be perpendicular to this particular hyperplane. That's not the case here, because at the corner, so depending upon how, what the angle of the corner is, your gradient could be pointing in any of the possible directions, um, as long as it's making a positive, in a, well, non-negative inner product with any of the feasible directions, okay? So that's what this necessary condition is saying. Now this necessary, so if x was equal to Rn, which is a convex set in Rn, then this immediately yields that the gradient of f has to be equal to zero, okay? So uh, we recover the necessary condition for optimality for unconstrained optimization from that particular necessary condition. So that's a good sanity check. Now what would the sufficient condition look like? Zero. No. <laughs> well, yeah, I think greater than zero would also work. Uh, well, uh, the sufficient condition is that if f is convex, then this leads to global minimality. Okay. Oh, wait a second. Actually, uh, let's try and so, of course, one sufficient condition F is convex, X star. global minimum if and only if so under convexity of the function you get a global minimality guarantee if that condition is satisfied And I want to prove 
this sufficient condition first because it's uh, pretty simple. Okay, so how should we go about the proof? So I know that f is convex implies that f of y is greater than or equal to f of x star plus gradient of f of x star transpose x minus x star for all o, oh, y minus x star for all y in capital X. This is by the convexity of the function f. And so if this term is non negative, then I immediately have that f of y is greater than or equal to f of x star for all for all y in capital X. Okay, so this is the definition of a convex, well not definition, but this is one way to characterize convex function that is f of y is greater than or equal to f of x star plus the gradient of f at x star y minus x, right? So this is the from the definition of convexity and this should hold for all y in x. So if this term is non-negative, then it means that f of y is greater than or equal to f of x star for all y in x. So one direction is easy because it follows from here. The other direction, which is if this is non-negative, that implies x star is a global minimum that follows from the definition of convexity of the function f. Okay. And now, if there are no more more questions, if there are no questions, then I'll move on to proving the the necessary conditions for optimality. So any questions on the sufficient condition? Okay, we are merely using the fact that the function f is convex to get this statement and from there it follows immediately because this is our hypothesis. So let's prove the necessary condition. Yes? Uh, is it possible to find some sufficient condition f, f is not convex? This is what the assignment question is about, right? <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, if f is not convex, so for non-convex situations, there are a lot of techniques that can be used to prove, that can be used to get sufficient conditions. So one of the ways is, if you change the variables and it becomes a convex problem, okay? So you started with a non-convex problem, you change the variables, you know, Let's say x1 square, you set it equal to y1, and then now you are doing the minimization over y1, then things can become convex, and then you can utilize that sufficient condition. Well, that's one of the answers. <laughs> but there are many more, okay? Uh, that's not the only way. Uh, but yeah, there, there are many ways, and we will discover, some, well, not discover, but we'll use it in some of the assignments in the subsequent uh, so in the subsequent assignments, we are going to use some of these ideas to transform a problem that is non-convex to a problem that is convex, and then whatever solution you get turns out to be globally optimal even for the original problem you started with, even though it was non-convex. Any other question? No? All right, so let's try and prove the necessary condition. So x star is local minimum, then it implies that this holds true. 
So what should I do? Um, let's consider g of alpha equals to f of x star plus alpha x minus x star. And alpha is in R. Well, it should actually be in 0, 1. Okay? So this gx is a function of a single variable, alpha, right? It's a function on real line. So what do I know about gx of alpha minus gx of 0? So I know that this is greater than or equal to 0 from the definition of local minimum, right? So gx of 0 is f of f at x star, gx of alpha for alpha strictly positive but within the interval 0 and 1 is some other f of x and assuming alpha is sufficiently small it will be within this epsilon ball, okay? So this point this point will be within this epsilon ball, assuming alpha is small but a positive number. So gx of alpha minus g of x at 0 is greater than or equal to 0. Okay. All right. So everyone is fine with this particular expression. So now I'm going to divide it by alpha because alpha is a positive quantity. Um, the, this sign doesn't change. Now I'm going to take limit alpha goes to zero from the positive side. So I have gradient of f at x star transpose x minus x star is greater than or equal to zero. Well, uh, no, there has to be an alpha here. So actually it should be del g x alpha over del alpha. That will be greater than or equal to zero. When alpha goes to zero, so so this is precisely the definition of the derivative of gx with respect to alpha uh, when limit alpha goes to zero. Uh, I want to write it in a better fashion. How should I write it? Uh, I don't need to write the limit. Okay, so I take the limit alpha goes to zero I get that the derivative of gx with respect to alpha at alpha equal to zero has to be greater than or equal to zero. And then I'm going to plug in the value of g of x from here and I get gradient of f at x star transpose x minus x star uh, greater than or equal to zero, and this should hold for all x in capital X. Okay. Can I try to get the projector up? Yeah, can you? Maybe. Do you know how to do it? Let's just do the podium PC. <laughs> and now, <laughs> now do black screen. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Good. 
เกินแทงกิวโอเคสอรี่ฟอร์ดิสรัปชันสวัสดีวิดูเฮียร์วินอว์ดัตจีออฟจีออฟเอ็กซ์แอดอัลฟาอิสเกรเตอร์ดันจีออฟเอ็กซ์แอดซีโร่เพราะว่าเป็นเซอร์โลเคอลเอ็กซ์ตาร์อิสเซอร์โลเคอลมินิมัมสวัสดีวิดูเฮียร์วินอว์ดัตจีออฟจีออฟเอ็กซ์แอดอัลฟาอิสเกรเตอร์ดันจีออฟเอ็กซ์แอดซีโร่เพราะว่าเป็นเซอร์โลเคอลเอ็กซ์ตาร์อิสเซอร์โลเคอลมินิมัมสวัสดีวิดูเฮียร์วินอว์ดัตจีออฟจีออฟเอ็กซ์แอดอัลฟาอิสเกรเตอร์ดันจีออฟเอ็กซ์แอดซีโร่เพราะว่าเป็นเซอร์โลเคอลเอ็กซ์ตาร์อิสเกรเตอร์ดันจีออฟเอ็กซ์แอดซีโร่เพราะว่าเป็นเซอร์โลเคอลเอ็กซ์ตาร์อิสเกรเตอร์ดันจีออฟเอ็กซ์แอดซีโร่เพราะว่าเป็นเซอร์โลเคอลเอ็กซ์ตาร์อิสเกรเตอร์ดันจีออฟเอ็กซ์แอดซีโร่เพราะว่าเป็นเซอร์โลเคอลเอ็กซ์ตาร์อิสเกรเตอร์ดันจีออฟเอ็กซ์แอดซีโร่เพราะว่าเป็นเซอร์โลเคอลเอ็กซ์ตาร์อิสเกรเตอร์ดันจีออฟเอ็กซ์แอดซีโร่เพราะว่าเป็นเซอร์โลเคอลเอ็กซ์ตาร์อิสเกรเตอร์ดันจีออฟเอ็กซ์แอดซีโร่เพราะว่าเป็นเซอร์โลเคอลเอ็กซ์ตาร์อิสเกรเตอร์ดันจีออฟเอ็กซ์แอดซีโร่เพราะว่าเป็นเซอร์โลเคอลเอ็กซ์ตาร์อิสเกรเตอร์ดันจีออฟเอ็กซ์แอดซีโร่เพราะว่าเป็นเซอร์โลเคอลเอ็กซ์ตาร์อิสเกรเตอร์ดันจีออฟเอ็กซ์แอดซีโร่เพราะว่าเป็นเซอร์โลเคอลเอ็กซ์ตาร์อิสเกรเตอร์ดันจีออฟเอ็กซ์แอดซีโร่เพราะว่าเป็นเซอร์โลเคอลเอ็กซ์ตาร์อิสเกรเตอร์ดันจีออฟเอ็กซ์แอดซีโร่เพราะว่าเป็นเซอร์โลเคอลเอ็กซ์ตาร์อิสเกรเตอร์ดันจีออฟเอ็กซ์แอดซีโร่เพราะว่าเป็นเซอร์โลเคอลเอ็กซ์ตาร์อิสเกรเตอร์ดันจีออฟเอ็กซ์แอดซีโร่เพราะว่าเป็นเซอร์โลเคอลเอ็กซ์ตาร์อิสเกรเตอร์ดันจีออฟเอ็กซ์แอดซีโร่เพราะว่าเป็นเซอร์โลเคอลเอ็กซ์ตาร์อิสเกรเตอร์ดันจีออฟเอ็กซ์แอดซีโร่เพราะว่าเป็นเซอร์โลเคอลเอ็กซ์ตาร์อิสเกรเตอร์ดันจีออฟเอ็กซ์แอดซีโร่เพราะว่าเป็นเซอร์โลเคอลเอ็กซ์ตาร์อิสเกรเตอร์ดันจีออฟเอ็กซ์แอดซีโร่เพราะว่าเป็นเซอร์โลเคอลเอ็กซ์ตาร์อิสเกรเตอร์ดันจีออฟเอ็กซ์แอดซีโร่เพราะว่าเป็นเซอร์โลเคอลเอ็กซ์ตาร์อิสเกรเตอร์ดันจีออฟเอ็กซ์แอดซีโร่เพราะว่าเป็นเซอร์โลเคอลเอ็กซ์ตาร์อิสเกรเตอร์ดันจีออฟเอ็กซ์แอดซีโร่เพราะว่าเป็นเซอร์โลเคอลเอ็กซ์ตาร์อิสเกรเตอร์ดันจีออฟเอ็กซ์แอดซีโร่เพราะว่าเป็นเซอร์โลเคอลเอ็กซ์ตาร์อิสเกรเตอร์ดันจีออฟเอ็กซ์แอดซีโร่เพราะว่าเป็นเซอร์โลเคอลเอ็กซ์ตาร์อิสเกรเตอร์ดันจีออฟเอ็กซ์แอดซีโร่เพราะว่าเป็นเซอร์โลเคอลเอ็กซ์ตาร์อิสเกรเตอร์ดันจีออฟเอ็กซ์แอดซีโร่เพราะว่าเป็นเซอร์โลเคอลเอ็กซ์ตาร์อิสเกรเตอร์ดันจีออฟเอ็กซ์แอดซีโร่เพราะว่าเป็นเซอร์โลเคอลเอ็กซ์ตาร์อิสเกรเตอร์ดันจีออฟเอ็กซ์แอดซีโร่เพราะว่าเป็นเซอร์โลเคอลเอ็กซ์ตาร์อิสเกรเตอร์ดันจีออฟเอ็กซ์แอดซีโร่เพราะว่าเป็นเซอร์โลเคอลเอ็กซ์ตาร์อิสเกรเตอร์ดันจีออฟเอ็กซ์แอดซีโร่เพราะว่าเป็นเซอร์โลเคอลเอ็กซ์ตาร์อิสเกรเตอร์ดันจีออฟเอ็กซ์แอดซีโร่เพราะว่าเป็นเซอร์โลเคอลเอ็กซ์ตาร์อิสเกรเตอร์ดันจีออฟเอ็กซ์แอดซีโร่เพราะว่าเป็นเซอร์โลเคอลเอ็กซ์ตาร์อิสเกรเตอร์ดันจีออฟเอ็กซ์แอดซีโร่เพราะว่าเป็นเซอร์โลเคอลเอ็กซ์ตาร์อิสเกรเตอร์ดันจีออฟเอ็กซ์แอดซีโร่เพราะว่าเป็นเซอร์โลเคอลเอ็กซ์ตาร์อิสเกรเตอร์ดันจีออฟเอ็กซ์แอดซีโร่เพราะว่าเป็นเซอร์โลเคอลเอ็กซ์ตาร์อิสเกรเตอร์ดันจีออฟเอ็กซ์แอดซีโร่เพราะว่าเป็นเซอร์โลเคอลเอ็กซ์ตาร์อิสเกรเตอร์ดันจีออฟเอ็กซ์แอดซีโร่เพราะว่าเป็นเซอร์โลเคอลเอ็กซ์ตาร์อิสเกรเตอร์ดันจีออฟเอ็กซ์แอดซีโร่เพราะว่าเป็นเซอร์โลเคอลเอ็กซ์ตาร์อิสเกรเตอร์ดันจีออฟเอ็กซ์แอดซีโร่เพราะว่าเป็นเซอร์โลเคอลเอ็กซ์ตาร์อิสเกรเตอร์ดันจีออฟเอ็กซ์แอดซีโร่เพราะว่าเป็นเซอร์โลเคอลเอ็กซ์ตาร์อิสเกรเตอร์ดันจีออฟเอ็กซ์แอดซีโร่เพราะว่าเป็นเซอร์โลเคอลเอ็กซ์ตาร์อิสเกรเตอร์ดันจีออฟเอ็กซ์แอดซีโร่เพราะว่าเป็นเซอร์โลเคอลเอ็กซ์ตาร์อิสเกรเตอร์ดันจีออฟเอ็กซ์แอดซีโร่เพราะว่าเป็นเซอร์โลเคอลเอ็กซ์ตาร์อิสเกรเตอร์ดันจีออฟเอ็กซ์แอดซีโร่เพราะว่าเป็นเซอร์โลเคอลเอ็กซ์ตาร์อิสเกรเตอร์ดันจีออฟเอ็กซ์แอดซีโร่เพราะว่าเป็นเซอร์โลเคอลเอ็กซ์ตาร์อิสเกรเตอร์ดันจีออฟเอ็กซ์แอดซีโร่เพราะว่าเป็นเซอร์โลเคอลเอ็กซ์ตาร์อิสเกรเตอร์ดันจีออฟเอ็กซ์แอดซีโร่เพราะว่าเป็นเซอร์โลเคอลเอ็กซ์ตาร์อิสเกรเตอร์ดันจีออฟเอ็กซ์แอดซีโร่เพราะว่าเป็นเซอร์โลเคอลเอ็กซ์ตาร์อิสเกรเตอร์ดันจีออฟเอ็กซ์แอดซีโร่เพราะว่าเป็นเซอร์โลเคอลเอ็กซ์ตาร์อิสเกรเตอร์ดันจีออฟเอ็กซ์แอดซีโร่เพราะว่าเป็นเซอร์โลเคอลเอ็กซ์ตาร์อิสเกรเตอร์ดันจีออฟเอ็กซ์แอดซีโร่เพราะว่าเป็นเซอร์โลเคอลเอ็กซ์ตาร์อิสเกรเตอร์ดันจีออฟเอ็กซ์แอดซีโร่เพราะว่าเป็นเซอร์โลเคอลเอ็กซ์ตาร์อิสเกรเตอร์ดันจีออฟเอ็กซ์แอดซีโร่เพราะว่าเป็นเซอร์โลเคอลเอ็กซ์ตาร์อิสเกรเตอร์ดันจีออฟเอ็กซ์แอดซีโร่เพราะว่าเป็นเซอร์โลเคอลเอ็กซ์ตาร์อิสเกรเตอร์ดันจีออฟเอ็กซ์แอดซีโร่เพราะว่าเป็นเซอร์โลเคอลเอ็กซ์ตาร์อิสเกรเตอร์ดันจีออฟเอ็กซ์แอดซีโร่เพราะว่าเป็นเซอร์โลเคอลเอ็กซ์ตาร์อิสเกรเตอร์ดันจีออฟเอ็กซ์แอดซีโร่เพราะว่าเป็นเซอร์โลเคอลเอ็กซ์ตาร์อิสเกรเตอร์ดันจีออฟเอ็กซ์แอดซีโร่เพราะว่าเป็นเซอร์โลเคอลเอ็กซ์ตาร์อิสเกรเตอร์ดันจีออฟเอ็กซ์แอดซีโร่เพราะว่าเป็นเซอร์โลเคอลเอ็กซ์ตาร์อิสเกรเตอร์ดันจีออฟเอ็กซ์แอดซีโร่เพราะว่าเป็นเซอร์โลเคอลเอ็กซ์ตาร์อิสเกรเตอร์ดันจีออฟเอ็กซ์แอดซีโร่เพราะว่าเป็นเซอร์โลเคอลเอ็กซ์ตาร์อิสเกรเตอร์ดันจีออฟเอ็กซ์แอดซีโร่เพราะว่าเป็นเซอร์โลเคอลเอ็กซ์ตาร์อิสเกรเตอร์ดันจีออฟเอ็กซ์แอดซีโร่เพราะว่าเป็นเซอร์โลเคอลเอ็กซ์ตาร์อิสเกรเตอร์ดันจีออฟเอ็กซ์แอดซีโร่เพราะว่าเป็นเซอร์โลเคอลเอ็กซ์ตาร์อิสเกรเตอร์ดันจีออฟเอ็กซ์แอดซีโร่เพราะว่าเป็นเซอร์โลเคอลเอ็กซ์ตาร์อิสเกรเตอร์ดันจีออฟเอ็กซ์แอดซีโร่เพราะว่าเป็นเซอร์โลเคอลเอ็กซ์ตาร์อิสเกรเตอร์ดันจีออฟเอ็กซ์แอดซีโร่เพราะว่าเป็นเซอร์โลเคอลเอ็กซ์ตาร์อิสเกรเตอร์ดันจีออฟเอ็กซ์แอดซีโร่เพราะว่าเป็นเซอร์โลเคอลเอ็กซ์ตาร์อิสเกรเตอร์ดันจีออฟเอ็กซ์แอดซีโร่เพราะว่าเป็นเซอร์โลเคอลเอ็กซ์ตาร์อิสเกรเตอร์ดันจีออฟเอ็กซ์แอดซีโร่เพราะว่าเป็นเซอร์โลเคอลเอ็กซ์ตาร์อิสเกรเตอร์ดันจีออฟเอ็กซ์แอดซีโร่เพราะว่าเป็นเซอร์โลเคอลเอ็กซ์ตาร์อิสเกรเตอร์ดันจีออฟเอ็กซ์แอดซีโร่เพราะว่าเป็นเซอร์โลเคอลเอ็กซ์ตาร์อิสเกรเตอร์ดันจีออฟเอ็กซ์แอดซีโร่เพราะว่าเป็นเซอร์โลเคอลเอ็กซ์ตาร์อิสเกรเตอร์ดันจีออฟเอ็กซ์แอดซีโร่เพราะว่าเป็นเซอร์โลเคอลเอ็กซ์ตาร์อิสเกรเตอร์ดันจีออฟเอ็กซ์แอดซีโร่เพราะว่าเป็นเซอร์โลเคอลเอ็กซ์ตาร์อิสเกรเตอร์ดันจีออฟเอ็กซ์แอดซีโร่เพราะว่าเป็นเซอร์โลเคอลเอ็กซ์ตาร์อิสเกรเตอร์ดันจีออฟเอ็กซ์แอดซีโร่เพราะว่าเป็นเซอร์โลเคอลเอ็กซ์ตาร์อิสเกรเตอร์ดันจีออฟเอ็กซ์แอดซีโร่เพราะว่าเป็นเซอร์โลเคอ
all of you know what a box looks like so looks like a box this is my a less than equal to so every point in this set it satisfies this condition okay a less than equal to xi sorry a is less than equal to x is less than equal to b so a would be the coordinate of this point and b would be the coordinate of that particular point okay so in two dimension a box constraint looks like this so this point is a1 a2 this point is b1 a2 this point is a1 b2 and this point is b1 b2 okay so this is the box constraint in two dimension this is a box constraint in three dimension and this is what a box constraint in n dimension is going to look like okay now let's say i am claiming that a point here x x star is the optimal solution what would that mean so the claim is xi this evaluated at x star it will be greater than equal to 0 if xi star equals to ai less than equal to 0 if xi star equals to bi and is equal to 0 if xi star is an open interval ai bi Okay, I'm of course going to ma make this assumption that bi minus ai is strictly positive, which means that there is some gap between the two, between the co two coordinates. It shouldn't be a single plane. Yes. So this box is a convex set, right? Sorry. The box is a convex set. The box is a convex set. So should the same necessary conditions also hold? Yes, it will. So and that's what would imply this expression. But the gradient must be positive because the x minus x star will always be positive. So the inner product will be positive. Uh, so x minus x star need not always be positive. So let's say uh, uh, I'm trying to think under what condition would x minus x star not be positive. Yeah, so if I'm, that's right. If I'm here, uh, then look at the, so let's, so if I'm here, look at the difference between B1, A2 minus the point here. And you will notice that in this direction, the direction is, po the, okay, so in this direction, so let me give it some name. Uh, it's much, it'll be easier to do it this way. So A1 plus A2 over two, no. A1 and A2 plus B2 over two. So that's this point, the midpoint of this particular line segment. Uh, and look at this P, assume that this is my point X, then I have X minus X star, so this is not my X star now, this is my X star. Uh, X minus X star would be 
Any thoughts what it would look like? So B1 minus A1. And then A2 minus B2 over 2. And this term is negative. Okay, so this term is positive, but A2 is less than B2, so this term is negative. Okay, so you'll not have only positive terms everywhere. Some of the terms could be negative. Okay, so the question is, we have a box constraint, we have a differentiable function, and I'm claiming that at x star, the derivative has to satisfy these three conditions, okay? So if it is close to the lower, if it is not close to, but if it is at the lower limit, the derivative has to be positive. If it is at the upper limit, the, uh, one of the coordinate is at, it, at its upper limit, then the corresponding derivative is going to be less than, equal to zero. And if it is within the set, within the set then in that case, the derivative has to be equal to zero, okay? Now, how am I, how, how, how can I go ahead, go ahead and prove this particular statement? Uh, so let's do this. Gradient of f at x star, x minus x star is equal to x star summation xi minus xi star, right? And I want this to be greater than or equal to zero. Right? So let's say if my xi star is equal to ai, so I can pick x, so if xi star equals to ai, then pick x such that x1 star, xi minus 1 star, xi star plus bi minus ai over 2, and xi plus 1 star, and so on. Yes. So there should be gradient uh, f x transpose. Transpose. Yes, there should be a transpose. And uh, how do you get the uh, summation there? This? Uh, yes. I equals 1 to n. So this is just the inner product of two vectors, right? So this vector consists of the vector of gradient of f with respect to each coordinate. And this is, of course, the difference between the two coordinates, right? And so you just take the inner product. Okay, so this is the uh, expression for the inner product between the gradient and the difference in coordinates. Uh, now, if my xi star is equal to ai, I'm going to pick a value of x which is the same at all coordinates except at xi, except at the ith coordinate, where I'm going to pick a point that is. So this is my x star. I'm going to pick a point that is somewhere here, okay, in that, inside the set. So this point is within the box. And if I apply it here, I'm going to get the expression that, so all the terms are going to cancel, right, because xi minus, so xj minus xj star is equal to zero, except at the ith position. And that yields 
this inequality that the gradient has to be non-negative if xi star is equal to ai. Okay, can everyone see it? So xj minus xj star is equal to zero for all j not equals to i. Okay, by this construction. So I'm picking a specific value of x from the set. I'm constructing this value of x such that this holds for all j not equal to i. And for i, this term is equal to some positive number. I can take the positive number on this side to conclude that the derivative is going to be non-negative when xi star is equal to ai. You can do the same trick to prove that the derivative with respect to xi is going to be less than equal to zero if xi star was equal to bi, and it will be equal to zero because now you can go either in positive direction or in negative direction, and so the derivative should be equal to zero under that particular condition. Okay. Any any question on this? All I am doing is applying the necessary conditions for optimality for this particular set. So pictorially, what does this mean? Let's uh, see it for the two-dimensional case. This is my set. If I claim this is my x star, then the derivative along the uh, derivative along one of the directions, so along this particular direction, along the x1 direction, and this is my x2 direction. So this is saying, so in, in this case, I'm at the x1 limit, lower limit. So x1 star is equal to a1. So the derivative is going to be positive, which means the function is going to point in, in any of the directions. But if I look at the other case, so x2 star is within the limits, strictly within the limit. So the derivative along this direction is equal to zero. So the function is going to point inwards exactly orthogonal to this particular surface. Now if I'm at this particular location, then my derivative along both coordinates is going to be positive. So my derivative is going to look like this. Okay, it's going to point inward because in this case, both the coordinates of the gradient of f are positive. In this case, it's going to be in this direction because uh, for, the same, for the same argument, so in this case, one limit is uh, the upper limit. So in x1 case, it is the upper limit. In x2 case, it is the lower limit. So in that case, the derivative is going to be negative along x1 direction, positive along x2 direction. That's this, uh, in which case the function will be pointing towards the interior of the set. So no matter which point is x star, the derivative is always going to point towards inside the set. And if the point is completely within the set, then the derivative is equal to zero because of this reason. Okay. Those of you who are wondering, this problem will not come in the exam. <laughs> Any question on this optimization over a box set? Yes. Is this generalized to a like parallel of that in this way you'd expect? Like this exact so by so do you mean cuboid or do you actually mean paralloped? Or just some linear transformation applied to all the unit vectors of the box.
I so I so first of all, I don't think it'll it'll be true for Paraloped in the original uh, coordinate system. But once you transform the coordinate system and get back in the form that it is a box constraint, then in that case, in that particular coordinate system, this would still be valid. Okay, so what does Paraloped look like? So if this is what your set looks like, then no, it, this, this condition will not be valid for this particular set because your sides are not vertical, sides are slanting. So you might have to change the coordinate system so that in the new coordinate system, this particular situation would still hold. Okay. Any other question? Okay. So let's look at simplex, which is another very important set. So simplex is x such that xi is positive and summation of xi is equal to r. Oh, I should write its name as simplex. Okay, so simplex is going to look like Okay, so it looks like a triangle uh, in a three-dimensional plane. In the two-dimensional plane, the simplex is just this set, just this line segment, that's simplex. Three-dimensional simplex looks like a triangular plane. And in n dimension, this is what the expression for simplex looks like. So now I want to derive conditions uh, or rather I'll just write it. So I don't think we have time uh, now. This is J minus. So if you're optimizing over simplex, the necessary condition of optimality yields this particular set of inequalities. This should hold for all i in one to n. You have to apply the same trick as we did in this case to prove this particular result. 
And then from here you can conclude that if xi star is strictly positive, then it means this must be non-negative, which implies this expression. So the derivative with respect to xj is going to be greater than or equal to the derivative with respect to xi, both evaluated at x star. Okay. Again, apply this trick so that you remain within the set and you will derive this result. And then from here, you can easily conclude that if your xi star is positive, then this inequality must hold. Okay. That's all I have for today. In the next class, we'll talk about projection theorem and then move on to algorithms for solving convex problems over convex set. Thank you.